Hi, this is Jeff from TournamentBowl.com, and I'm here to show you how you can set up your association tournament on TournamentBowl.com. Uh, big thanks to Justin Whitley from North Carolina for letting me use his login so I can uh, make an actual tournament. He's getting ready to set one up, and I told him I'd do it for him and make this a video as a sample. So, the first thing we're going to need to do, oh, and I should say that you'll need a login in order to do this. I'd be happy to set you up. Just email me at jeff at tournamentbowl.com, or you can find us on Facebook. I'll get you set up and make sure you know what you're doing. So, we'll start by creating a tournament, and we set the name of the tournament, and this is the Wilson USBC uh, tournament. I guess we can just say Wilson USBC and you're automatically going to be the tournament director. You can add an additional person if you want, uh, but you can just leave that as yourself. And then the, the center, I'm told, is Westview Lanes in Wilson, North Carolina, and you can put a note here if you want. If your center isn't there, you click here, and you can add your bowling center as well. Okay, so the events are your singles, doubles, and team. And it's also all events. I'm going to put that into a separate video uh, just to keep it simple. So we're going to do singles, doubles, and team right now. So s singles. Now you want to have a full name and a short name. A uh, short name shows up on links for standings and stuff like that. It's good to keep it short. But there is a place to put the full name. You don't need to put Wilson USBC any place. That's going to be everywhere already. You don't have to put the year. You don't have to put the tournament name. Uh, so be descriptive as you want to, but you don't have to get crazy with that. Um, can bowlers enter? That has to do with can they enter this tournament online. And uh, it's $20 is the entry fee, I'm told. And we don't need team names. Number of games to bowl is three. Carrying pins, that would be if they're going to start the event with some pins, maybe from a qualifying or something, but that's not what we're doing. Uh, format normal. Okay, handicap can be a little bit complicated, so let me tell you about this. The base is 220, and the percent is 90. And here you can decide what you want to do if people are over 220. Let's say there's going to be no negative handicap. If you put yes there and somebody averages 230, they're going to lose 9 pins. And the method, we'll say, is going to be a singles event, um, or say bowler handicap by game. Now, if you do it by series, it's going to take their average of the three-game average subtracted from 660 and find their three-game handicap and just add it all at the end. Um, and you can do that. Now, it's, it'll make a difference of a pin or two sometimes because of truncating. If you want to see an exam some examples of that, click the help right there. and You'll learn more about it. Leave alibi as no. And there's your first event. Now we're going to do the same thing with doubles. This is $40 to enter because there's two of them. So consider that to be a team entry, not an individual entry. Three games set for each. No carrying pins. Handicap. 220 and 90%. Say no negative handicap. And then we'll be bowler handicap by game again. Every person gets their own handicap. And then team, four on a team, entry fee here would be $80. Now, you can have, say people have team names here, and if you do that, then every time you put in a team, you'd also want to put in their team name. It's just how, and then that's how they'll show on the standings. Probably simpler just to leave them like that, but you can do what you want. Again, a three game set, no carryover, handicap, 220, 90%. And all three of my events are now ready to go. Next step is to set up our squads. I'm told that the first squad is on April 17th at 7.30. You have to put in the AM or the PM, otherwise how are we going to know, right? And then you put in which events are being bowled at that time. So maybe you're only doing singles at 7.30, or singles and doubles, or something like that. Um, you can check whichever boxes you want to be available. You can put a note for that squad. Maybe check in time. That would be a good thing to put there. We've got another squad that's going to happen on the 19th, and that's at 7.30. Now, s you might be having um, 
Some people think of the singles and doubles as happening in one squad because you go there at 7.30 and you just bowl all six games all at one time. You want to think of that as two different squads. So if you're telling people to show up at 7.30 for singles and doubles, create another squad for, what, 9 o'clock or whatever time you think it's going to be and put the doubles entries there because otherwise they're going to show up um, at the same time when you go to input scores. You'll, you'll see what I mean if you, if you try to think of them both as the same squad. So put if, if it's a separate event and the same person's going to bowl them, put it in separate squads. Now, Justin's actually got lots of other squads, but for to keep this brief, I'll, uh, I'll move ahead from there. But you can have as many squads as you want. The next option you have in step six is to upload a document or two or three or as many as you want. I can put rules or a blank entry form, some paper, um, or a flyer or a picture of my dog, whatever it is you want to have available to your bowlers, that you can put it here and you can describe it and you just pull it right off your computer with that. Or you can link to your website, maybe your association website, or maybe your Facebook page, um, and then describe what it is that where that link goes. And that's all optional. You don't have to do that, but you sure can. Step seven is how bowlers can enter. The default is Enter on, you can enter online right here on Tournament Bowl, and if you leave it just like this, then right now, a board can go to TournamentBowl.com, find the Wilson USBC Tournament, click on New Entry Form, and enter your tournament. And you'll see that as the director. In fact, if you change this to Yes, now they can not only enter your tournament, but they can even pay you. There's a checkout via PayPal, and they can just pay with a credit card, and they're all ready to go. And if you want to set that up, maybe you and I have a conversation about how that works. Um, probably the most popular combination is right there. And then if we actually open it up right there, and so now they can open. So this is sort of the yes but not yet status right here. And then all systems go right there. So let's do that for Justin. And now you're really ready to go. Uh, once you've got enough entries to know what your prize fund is, fund is for each event. You set that up right here. Just type them all in and whether or not you want it to show on the standings. But really, your tournament is ready to go. Right now people can enter and you can see this is the short names here. That's why we keep them tidy because they all line up in a row. And as people enter online, you will see them right here on the dashboard. Nobody there yet, but we haven't waited very long. So now we'd want to hop on our Facebook pages and tell all of our league bowlers that they can sign up for the tournament at tournamentbowl.com. All right, if you got any questions, give me a shout. You know where to find me.